When it comes to inspecting concrete pools, the interior surface inspection is going to be the cause of a lot of questions. Um, the interior surface of the swimming pool, just to identify first exactly what I'm talking about, is when you build a concrete pool, you build the shell structure, and that's the thick concrete part. And so it's just like a big bowl in the ground made of concrete. Um, but that bowl made of concrete, there's a couple problems with it. One, it's not very aesthetically pleasing, and two, it would just leak water like crazy. Um, concrete is porous and what that means is that water will just travel through it. Um, in, in, a, in essence it soaks up water like a sponge. Um, so if you just had a concrete pool with no interior surface on it then your concrete pool would leak a lot of water and it would be very rough on the feet. Uh, so instead what you do is you pour the concrete pool shell or you, you shoot it in depending on how you build them and then once that's finished and finished with a rough finish, in fact the rougher the better, usually you use uh, a wood float or something like that and you look at it and it's kind of, it's certainly not a finished, finished look at all and that's your rough base. That's the structure, that's the shell, that's the meat of your swimming pool. And then to that you would apply a concrete pool coping, which is just a cap that exists on top of the pool wall. You would probably put a tile band, which is about 12 inches of tile, on the vertical surface of the top of the wall. And then you would put an interior surface. So that interior surface is going to seam from the tile band all the way down the walls, across the floor, up the other wall. Uh, if you have interior steps, that's all going to be covered in your interior surface. And that interior surface is, typically speaking, plaster. There's a lot of different terms to describe plaster, uh, proprietary names and blends and uh, things like that, but essentially what all interior concrete surface, surfaces on swimming pools are is a very, very dense mortar. So a concrete product that's mixed without any large aggregate, so only sand, uh, and that sand in this case is very, very fine, which uh, with a couple of additional admixes or ingredients in the concrete mix, produces an extremely dense um, mortar product that's applied at about a half inch thickness over the entire interior surface of your pool. And a lot of times that's called marbleite, marcite. Um, what else is it called? Uh, marbleite, marcite. Um, there's there's uh, ones that are called uh, crystal coat. There's ones that use um, integral um, aggregates such as marble and crystal, a powderized crystal instead of just sand. Uh, and these are, these are the propri proprietary blends that I'm talking about. Like uh, 3M makes a product called Color Quartz, and it's just powderized quartz aggregate that's available in almost any color. So if you were to mix that with, let's say, a federal white Portland cement, uh, a pure bright white Portland cement instead of traditional gray cement, then you're going to get this really interesting color, and it's going to be super dense. And that's what is applied over the interior surface. And it's not even just the fact that it's dense that makes it the the reason why water doesn't go through it it's the way in which it's applied it's applied uh, with a process called a hard trowel essentially the concrete is uh, or the mortar is applied and then it's let it allowed some time to set up or begin to uh, set or begin to get hard and then it's troweled again and that troweling process you apply a lot of force you use the side of your trowel the concrete's almost hard but you're still troweling it then you can get this ultra smooth finish on it and that smooth finish with the very dense mortar is what provides the water resistance on a concrete pool. And it's, you'll notice I said resistance, not proof, because it's still a, a porous product. Concrete pools are not waterproof no matter what kind of interior surface they have. They're only water resistant, which is why that interior surface is so important because you're never going to have a waterproof concrete pool. It's always going to lose a certain amount of water. That water's not leaking through a crack necessarily in escaping the basin, but more like a sponge. As I said, the, the shell itself just kind of leaches water and will become saturated with water. Um, so if you have an older interior surface or a failed interior surface, then the rate at which that water is going to leach out of your pool becomes uh, very high because given the, the large surface area that we're talking about. So over the course of the entire surface area of the interior surface of your pool, if it's leaching out everywhere, then you're going to be losing water at an unsustainable rate. And that's when an interior sur surface renovation is required. And that brings us to the different kinds of interior surface 
surface that you can have because uh, there isn't necessarily just one. There isn't just um, uh, the mortar that I talked about. Well, there's also aggregate blends, uh, proprietary ones like Pebble Tech, uh, which um, basically it sounds like that's like an exposed aggregate interior surface. In fact, that's exactly what it is, an exposed aggregate interior surface on the swimming pool. Um, and there's, uh, there's similar options like that. When it comes time to inspect the interior surface, the biggest thing that you're worried about is that it's kind of like the shingles on your roof. When the shingles on your roof fail, you could sometimes add a second layer of shingles. And then that's a much easier job than tearing off all the, the old shingles, potentially uh, fixing the wood as well. And that's kind of what's happening here with the interior surface. The interior surface of your pool is probably, let's just say plaster to begin with. Concrete pool structure, plaster interior finish with about a foot of porcelain tile at the top of the wall. That's a very common uh, orientation for swimming pools. So let's say that that plaster surface after 10 years time, the pool is now 10 years old, it's it's failed. It needs it needs to be resurfaced and you know this because it's very rough. It's like a 50 grit sandpaper instead of a 400 grit sandpaper kind of feel or maybe 800 grit sand. It's supposed to be smooth, very smooth, maybe even more than that. Maybe, maybe even as much as 2000 grit. Um, it should be very smooth. If it's very rough and it would uh, drag on your skin or if your bathing suit would, would uh, get damaged from it, that's a sign that it's old and it's very porous um, and you're probably losing a lot of water so at that 10 year time you can actually add a second layer over top of that initial layer uh, and that process involves just taking out anything that's loose or delaminated and applying a new plaster layer and there's kind of two ways that you do that. One way is you just, you just roll right over the old one. And where the where the wall, um, the tile on the wall and the interior surface of, the, of the, the pool used to meet flush and seamlessly. Now they wouldn't because there'd be too much plaster. So, this, so there'd be kind of a, a lump of plaster where it meets the tile band. And that's an indication. That's something that you're looking for. Oh, this pool has had multiple interior surfaces on it. Nobody would build a concrete pool like that where just from the initial... Uh, installation you've just got the the plaster just lumped up there it would always seem uh, um, or uh, marry seamlessly with the the tile band itself so that's definitely something that I would be looking at there if you see that lump that indicates that it's been renovated but what if there's no lump that means it's it's not been renovated that's original tile not necessarily a skilled installer uh, what they'll do when they renovate a concrete pool like that is they will uh, cut with a with a diamond blade along where the tile band and and the interior surface meet, they'll cut a clean edge there, and then they'll chip down eight to 12 inches of plaster off the wall. So that allows you to marry that edge again seamlessly, so visually it looks great. And then eight inches, 10 inches, 12 inches down the wall, the, the plaster will gradually uh, come back out to that and then go over top of the old one. But you don't see it in the same way. It's not visually detracting like it is in the first example where the second layer is just added over top. It's more work and it's more expensive, so you don't see that all the time. Time, but be aware that that's something that can happen. You can think you're looking at original tile, but you're actually looking at renovated tile. So if there's, if you have an interior surface that's in question and you're looking at the pool and the pool looks anything other than perfect, um, for example, if there's any blemishes, cracks, things chipping off, pieces missing, colors, stains, anything like that, then you need to explore further what's going on with the interior surface and you probably want to bring an expert in. Uh, but if you're still at the preliminary stage and you just want an initial opinion as to what's going on here, the next step is going to be to determine what kind of interior surface you have. Because maybe that pool was built uh, concrete and then it had plaster. Then it had that second coat of plaster on it. But then at that point, the person couldn't afford to renovate it properly and strip all that plaster away and redo it to its original glory, maybe at that point they said, you know what, just grab some paint from the hardware store and roll it on. And maybe that paint from the hardware store really didn't do a good job, so the next year they used a different paint, but they used that over the original old crappy hardware store paint. And what if that's 20 years ago and since then there's been 15 more layers of who knows what kind of paint added to it. That is very common. When you go and look at an older concrete pool to just see multiple delaminating layers 
layers of different colors of paint and some of it's thick and rigid and it breaks and crumbles in your hands like potato chips. Some of it's just chalky and milky and when you touch it, it just brushes away and the water in that area goes all cloudy. Well, you need to be able to identify what kind you have, whether you have an original plaster in your pool or whether that plaster has been painted or whether maybe you have a tile interior surface or maybe you have an aggregate interior surface. Being able to identify those is key in being able to inspect those. If you don't know what it is you're looking at, there's no way you can tell whether it needs work or not, or more importantly, just how much work it's going to need. So keep watching these videos and I'll identify even further exactly what you have and exactly what it's going to take to renovate that if that's what you need.